Nobody knows we're here. Then we had to uh, brush the crowd away in order to get you an airplane to do an interview on. I'm telling you here, they brought a couple airplanes in here, and all of a sudden there was a bunch of people standing around it. Of course, that's good. That's why we all come. I'm Dan Johnson. We're here at the Midwest LSA Expo 2011, and we're going to look at a whole flock of Zenith aircrafts. And who have we got here to introduce it all to us today? Hi, I'm uh, Roger Dubert from the factory at Zenith, and uh, here we brought in the 701, which is a Stoll aircraft, a new 650 aircraft with the UL-powered engine, and then our new Stoll uh, CH-750. Now, when I came to visit you there in uh, uh, Mexico, Missouri, and saw the very nice facility there, I had to admit I didn't realize that you were still producing the 701. I knew you were still doing parts and because there's a whole fleet of them out there. But this aircraft is still in active production as well as the 750, is that correct? That is correct. And part of the reason why the 701 is still in production is lots of parts of the world still view it as an ultralight. Ah. And you can build it as a, as a really inexpensive light sport airplane compared to a lot of other, other kits out there. Uh, and you can use a 503 engine. That's what it was designed for. Which, you still know, today, you can, still use, today a you can use a 503 engine. That's a pretty rare thing to say yes. anymore. They've all kind of grown up a little bit. And pilots and airplanes tend to gain weight over time. Not you so much, I don't think. <laughs> you must not be eating enough hamburgers, but uh, most of us tend to gain a little weight, and air airplanes right. do too. But this one has also retained a little leaner lines, and a little, it's an easier construction, is it, than the 750, which looks a lot like this, but not identical. Yes and no. Uh, the 701, we haven't changed the construction in the kit compared to like the 750. The 750 is a matched hole kit, where the 701 is not a matched hole ah, kit. Ah, okay. Now, as far as from a scratch builder, they're, yes, they're about the same, and probably the 701 is a little easier, faster to build. But match hole construction, then what that means is there's a lot of small holes using uh, uh, laser, uh, excuse CNC. me, uh, CNC equipment that puts a lot of small holes in the pieces as it cuts those pieces and then all the builder has to do is make sure the holes overlock properly uh, following the instructions of course but it makes the job a great deal easier I'm told. Exactly you're gonna start off right away start click on the part A to part B together and then you're gonna start riveting after that so it does take away the build time quite now, a bit. Now what's the difference then on the 701? 701 the skins are pre-drilled but the underneath structure is not drilled okay. so you have to draw your center lines and all your ribs all your flanges lay the skin on top, make sure everything's centered, and then drill and start click on it. I'm guessing there are some people for whom that's actually the most fun part, though. Oh, sure it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a different breed today. You know, we, we, we got guys, all they want is match hold, but we still have guys who want to really build the airplane. Well, and you got some others like me who want the thing already done. <laughs> so uh, through another company, you can supply those aircraft as well. Oh, yes, definitely. We do have factory built, uh, you know, the 650s and the 750s. Not the 701s, but the other two models. The other two models are available that way. Well, let's, let's go on down the line here and take a look at some of the other airplanes beside the CH-701, uh, all from Chris Heinz who was just uh, given some nice uh, kudos at Air Venture. That was nice to see that attention given to him for all his design work yes. that spawned all of this. So yes. Let's yes. go have a look at some more. So now we're looking at the low wing model from Zenith Aircraft and this has got a completely different looking cowl on it, a very attractive shapely cowl, but it's got a label on here that tells us there's something different under the cowling or under the hood as it were. What do we got here, Roger? Well, we have a UL powered engine out of Belgium. We're very excited about it for a couple reasons. One, it's fuel injection, and it has a FADEX system. So, I mean, basically, all you have is a master switch, turn the key, and you're done. I mean, it's, it does everything else for you. Uh, it's just there's no problem with heating, cooling. Uh, it's so simple. Installation, everything. FADEC is something we have full authority, digital engine control, I believe is what that stands for. Mm -hmm. And it's a system whereby the pilot's workload is decreased by having the engine be smart enough, if you will, exactly. to know what it kind of needs. And you right. push the lever forward and things work out right. You pull the lever back and things work out right. Well, for example, on startup, like uh, let's say today is cool, uh, you turn on your system, the FADEC knows it's let's say 40 degrees outside and knows how to choke the engine enough to start it on a cool day versus you would have to choke it or prime it or, or whatever for whatever engine you're using. And which you can easily do wrong, I know, because oh, yes. I've done it wrong many times. Yes. So something that does it for you would be quite an interesting thing. Now, uh, you guys at Zenith Aircraft, as opposed to Eastman, which fully Eastman Aircraft, which fully builds the two models that Roger mentioned earlier, but you're a kit company and a very active kit company, about 200 units a year, which makes many other producers pretty envious, I'm guessing. 
But so you could install this engine. You couldn't yet install this engine in an SLSA because the engine itself doesn't have approval. But this is where a lot of these things get worked out. How did you come across this engine, and uh, what do you what do you think is going to be the response to it? What's beside the controls? Does it have more power, for example, or things like that? Well, the, the UL engine we have on here is called the 350 IS. They have uh, four different engines, and this is the 130 horse engine. 130. 30. Wow. And uh, I mean, yeah, you can definitely tell you have 130, and then we're going to eventually try the next smallest one, is 118, okay. just to see. You know, you're going to save a little bit more fuel and save a little bit more cost, and just see if, it, if there is that much advantage in the 650 of the two models. Well, you're a kit producer, so I'm sure all the time people are asking, and you mainly do airframes, I know that's, that's, that's your mission, if you will, uh, but they're going to ask you about engines and which one you recommend and what's been the res early response to the UL engine? Oh, excellent response because, you know, guys want to make it, to make it simple. They don't have to mess with the, you know, mixture or, or adjusting the carburetors uh, and the cooling problems some engines have. Uh, but. Zenith, we're, we always like to try a variety of different engines. That's what we like. You know, we don't want to stick with one engine. So we'll try the UL, prove it, make sure it works, and then we're going to shoot for another engine. Excellent. Good for you. Keep up that good work. We've got one more airplane in the fleet we need to go look at, and it's just down over here. Well, now we're looking at the, I guess it's one of the newest members of the fleet. This is the 750. A lot like the 701, but a lot not like the 701. And, you know, this term right here that you've got right on the side of it here, Sky Jeep, this is what a lot of people, they look at this airplane, they go, some people say anyway, well, it's not the prettiest airplane I've ever seen, but then you look at a Jeep, the automobile kind, and you look, well, that's not the prettiest automobile I've seen either, but they have their utility and they do their things well. I got to fly this at the factory along with my wife and uh, really enjoyed the experience. Tell us a little bit, Roger, about what makes this airplane different than the 701 we looked at a moment ago. Well, it all started, everybody knows, from the 701, and then everybody wanted a, a larger 701, so we went to the 801, which is a four-seat airplane. Well, that was before the light sport was introduced. Then once the light sport was introduced, we decided we got to build a light sport airplane bigger than the 701, so we came out with the 750. And there's, mu there's so much more room in the cockpit versus the 701. The seats are adjustable, easy to get in and out. I mean, you just sit in there, pull your legs, what light sport could you do that to, you know? Pretty easy, yep. And then we do have the bubble door, so... Yeah, and I'm looking at it from this side here, and wow, there is a lot, a serious amount of curvature to that door uh, that you can see. And that's right about, as I recall, your elbow is something right about here. Correct. So you've really got right where people kind of need a little extra literal elbow room. You got it in this airplane. Correct. But it also made a situation where you could turn around and you could look aft in this airplane quite easily because that door allows you to stick your head a little further out without getting outside. Okay, exactly. Um, of all the 701, the 701 has been around longer, the 750 is fairly new, but how many of these guys are flying? There's probably about three to 400 kits out there on the 750 and I would predict, That's the new one, so yes, you already got 350 yes. of those out. Or yes, and I would predict there's probably 150 to 200 750s out there flying. Excellent. And it, it, it takes six months to a year to complete a 750 from start to finish. And when was it first offered? Four years ago. Four years ago, okay. But the 701's been around since, wow, back into the 80s. 86. Somehow. 86 it was, okay. And how many of those are flying? Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a number? Can you pull up a number out of your mind? I'd say there's probably about 2,000. 2,000 of those flying? flying? I have no idea. And that's just the 701. They've also got the 601 and the 6, well, now the 650 and the 801, and there were a couple of other airplanes in the earlier days of the Zenith and Zen Air brands, and got any idea how many total flying? Oh, I would say at least probably 6,000. 6,000, so here's one of our great success stories and still doing a great job down there in Mexico, Missouri. Thanks for talking to us today, Roger. Here Thank at you. the Midwest LSA Expo 2011, I'm Dan Johnson reporting for aircraftreporters.tv. And where can we get more information on the airplane deck? Excellent. What's the address that we should send people to to go get some more information, right? Uh, zenithair.com. Zenithair.com. And have you had an opportunity to do any writing at all on this thing? <laughs> I have. I think I've gotten to fly. I haven't flown an 801 yet, so one day I'll have to get in that. I think I've flown all the other ones. Most of those are available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.